continuation of um, second order differential equations. In this case, instead of having a differential equation equal to zero, making it homogeneous, we're going to have a differential equation second order that's equal to something other than zero, some kind of function. So we're going to consider these non-homogeneous. All right, so if we're going to work with this, there's two um, pieces that we're going to be looking for. Uh, the one we worked for before, we're going to call that solution, the homogeneous solution, uh, y sub c. Now, some textbooks call that complementary, but I like calling it characteristic because that's usually what we set up the r squared plus 5r plus, ooh, that should be a y, um, plus 3. So we're, characteristic or complementary, it really doesn't matter. It's the solution of the homogeneous um, differential equation. And then the other piece over here, this 2x minus 7, we're just going to find a function, any other function, that is not has nothing to do with y of c, that also satisfies this differential equation. All right, and the important thing, of course, is y sub c and y sub p are linearly independent of each other because we're going to generate this huge um, y function out of both of them, superposition again. All right. So the concentration for the first part here is just going to be finding a particular solution. Well, this is a linear equation, and what I'm thinking of is we're going to have to plug in a function into y. We're going to have to take its derivative and plug it in there. And then we're going to have to take the solution and plug it into a double prime. And the way we're going to get um, a 2x minus 7 after taking a uh, first derivative and a second derivative is more than likely going to have a linear quality to it. So I'm going to make a guess, and let's guess that our particular solution, yp, is going to be a linear function in x, so some ax plus b. Now, if this is my guess, then y prime of p would just be a, and y double prime of p would just be 0. So if we substitute this into y double prime plus 5y prime plus 3y, and it's equal to 2x minus 7, we should be able to figure out what an a and a b would be appropriate. So let's see, y double prime would be 0, plus 5y prime would be 5 times a, plus 3 times y would be 3 times the original guess of ax plus b, and this is going to equal uh, 2x minus 7. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, use one of those neat little properties of polynomials, that if you have a polynomial on the left and a polynomial on the right and they're equal to each other, their coefficients also have to be equal. So on this side, if we group up our variables correctly, we get 3ax is the x variable, and then the constant term is going to be 5a plus, and don't forget the 3 factor out there, 3b. And this is going to equal 2x plus, or 2x minus 7. So this gives us two equations. 3a, the coefficient of x, has to equal the coefficient of x on the other side. So right off the bat, we're getting a is equal to uh, 2 thirds. The other equation is going to be 5a plus 3b must equal the negative 7. This is the constant term. And we already know a is equal to 2 thirds, so that becomes 10 thirds plus 3b is equal to negative 7. I don't like working with fractions, so I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So you get 10 plus 9b is equal to negative 21. Uh, subtract 10 and divide by 9, so we're going to get b is equal to, um, let's see, that would be negative 31 divided by 9. So we get this b equals negative 31 nines. So our particular solution, one that will work, is equal to 2 thirds a, or I'm sorry, 2 thirds x minus 31 ninths. And this would satisfy the differential equation. And that becomes our particular solution. All right. Now, if we have a differential equation and instead of a linear or a polynomial operator as a function on the other side, we have this you know, trigonomic, uh, we have to take an idea, a guess of it as our particular solution might be, well, some a sine of x. And we find out real soon that this can't be true 
because over on the other side we have this y, we have a y prime, and we have a y double prime. Now y and y double prime will be some kind of form of sine of, uh, sine of x, but y prime is going to be cosine. So this guess at a particular solution is kind of incorrect. So our better guess would be a combination of a cosine function and a sine function. And I'm going to write it in the order of, you know, the complex solution uh, of a characteristic, cosine first and sine second. But it really doesn't matter. So if this is our particular solution, our guess, with coefficients a and b, um, if we take the derivative of this, we'll get, oh, negative a cosine, uh, oops, sine of x. I always do that. And then over here, we'll get b cosine of x. Derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. All right, and then y double prime of p is going to equal negative a cosine of x and negative b sine of x. All right, then the fun begins. We've got to take all of this and plug it into this differential equation. So it's going to be four times this bottom one, and I'm going to kind of shorthand this. It's going to be four times this bottom one, because it's four times y double prime. It's going to be one times the first derivative, and it's going to be three times um, the regular old y function. And we want to make sure that this is equal to 3 sine of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all my terms. So this gives me 3a cosine, 1b cosine, um, and negative 4a cosine. So that's 3a minus 4a is minus uh, a cosine of x. And let's see, this would be 3b sine minus 1a. Um, I screwed up there someplace, didn't I? Hold on. Let's go back to cosine. 3a minus 4a is minus a. Don't forget the b, plus b cosine. So this would be b minus a cosine of x. There we go. And then with the sine, you get 3b. And then down here, you're going to get minus 4b, so you get a negative b. But up here, you get a minus a. So this would be oh, plus a negative a minus b sine of x. And this has to equal 3 sine of x. All right, so that tells us, same idea. There's no cosine on the other side, so b minus a has to equal 0. And negative a minus b has to equal 3. Well, this tells us that b is equal to a. And if b is equal to a, then I can substitute b for a and get negative a minus a, which is negative 2a, is equal to 3. And therefore, a is equal to negative 3 halves. All right. So b is also equal to negative 3 halves. So a particular solution with this uh, trigonomics would be um, a is negative 3 halves, so we get negative 3 halves cosine of x, and b is negative 3 halves, so we get negative 3 halves sine of x. And that would be the particular solution to this trigonomic setup.